no idea. I hope there's grass. I hope there's a lot of grass. It's giving something. It's so cute. <gasps> oh my God, wait, I love this. Okay, we're gonna... and gamers i didn't think this music was gonna get so loud and there's no way for me to fix it except to turn it off so that kind of sucks i originally wasn't even gonna record this but i want to look at it anyway so we're gonna take a look at it i have been griping for at least a month if not longer that i really really wanted to go to the genshin art exhibit thing in new york now would you like i would like you to think about that logistically and i do have to turn off the music it's just too loud logistically i'm in texas that's not happening. And I also think it's over by now, but I do think this started like right when the real life exhibition was ending because it was like overlapping with when I went back to school and that was like the right dates. Anyways, I think this is like an online version of the art exhibit. So we're going to go through it. It's very awkward without the music, but I don't want to have to edit it out entirely. So I'm just not going to play it. <laughs> so this is the Ride the Waves to a Rendezvous in Fontaine online event. I'm not entirely sure. I usually don't do videos for the online events. I think the last time I did a video for one of the online events was like the first anniversary event, like that far back. So let's just go with it. I need to log in. I, I thought, you know, I, I thought I would have to log in. I'm just assuming that maybe it's because we get rewards for doing the event. So that would that would make sense, right? That would make sense. Because also and I, my UID is populated in. So I guess that is the reason. Anyways, let's go to the exhibition. Finally. All right. There's a lot of things and it looks like the databank from Star Rail. <laughs> You'll have the chance to obtain a puzzle piece for each section of content you browse. Oh, we're going to browse all of it. There's only six. That's not bad. Each piece of the puzzle obtained will also earn you a prize draw opportunity. Hey, yo, didn't know that. I just am here for the art because I'm annoying and like art. All right, character concepts. We'll start with that unless, oh, oh, I don't know what I was doing. Oh, hello. Um, is the, wait, okay. So this is character concepts. So it's only for three characters. I guess that makes sense. Let's, so let's start with Lynette. We'll go down the line. Oh, okay. So yeah, it is actually the character art, the concept art. I know I saw people posting, I think it was Linny's concept art. I saw some tweets of it back when the exhibition had just started. It honestly, it genuinely even could have been concept art pictures from the official Genshin account like it could have been like in the background of something I'm like looking I remember this image being a thing for, I don't think that's her final art but I do re like vaguely remember it because we've known about Lynette for a while you know and see this this is this one's beyond me this is a lot of sketching and I no idea so I guess we just look at all three of them yeah I'm pretty sure I've seen this before I'm pretty sure I've seen the one for Lenny or maybe it was this shot specifically. It's like in the background or like the foreground of, or something of one of these photos they physically posted from the physical art exhibit. So that's the early drafts and then the animation design. Yeah, that makes sense. That's why I can't tell what it is because it's a lot of action shots. And then there's Femine and I got the puzzle piece with Lynette on it. We just have to look at everything. We just have to look at everything, I think. There's so much for him. I think it's because he has the coat and they literally went to the trouble of like designing what's under the coat, which I don't know why I'm surprised because the same thing, it was the same thing with Diluc, his original skin. No one knew he was wearing a t-shirt under that jacket <laughs> until like, what was it? Like two years into the game. I, I remember that. I vaguely, not vaguely. I specifically remember that. It's so interesting though. That's so much for the concept art. There's so much concept art for him and he's literally just four star. <laughs> oh, this is a really nice shot. The early creative draft shot right here. This one specifically is really nice. I do wish I could zoom in, but I don't. I think I have to zoom in on the full page and it's kind of annoying, but this is really nice. I really like that. And he's this helmet. <laughs> I'm also looking, there's like a little chibi version. That's so cute. This is why I wanted to see it in person because like I could just like get up really close to it. I can't do that here, but it's cute. And the animation shots. I like how they still animate. Oh, originally it looks like he was supposed to have like a, a TV helmet. Was he? I have no idea. That would have been interesting. Like it's entirely different. Okay, so then we have, I think the map, which I literally have not gotten to. Yes, scenery concepts. So first we have the area, Anapausis. I think that's how to say it. I got my puzzle piece, you know, I'll take it. Oh, so this is kind of spoiling some of the scenery for me because I haven't done all of Fontaine yet. But what I love this. Oh my God, I love this. This is like the little old lady in the shoe area that I was talking about in the, one of the special programs somewhere. I love this look. It's very like parts of it are very like old timey fairy tale. And then other parts of it are very like Howl's Moving Castle, Studio Ghibli-esque. And I love that. <laughs> I love that so much. I definitely think this might be one of my favorite areas when I finally do reach it. I'm not gonna be able to shut up about it. 
And there's like this, the rounded roofs. This is just early creative drafts, but still it looks so nice. I wonder, it looks like they did were able to bring that into like the concept art specifically. I really wish we there were, and I hope there's more of like the grass. I hope there's grass. I hope there's a lot of grass. I want more Studio Ghibli House Moves and Castle than like steampunk, if that makes sense. Which obviously I could see that if I wanted to really badly, but it's so pretty. The concept, I keep, just keep going through the concept art. You think there'd be a little thingy? One of them like bounce. Oh, they just bounce. Okay. So then there's the Corda Fontaine. I don't really need to go through the rest of these because I did find the puzzle piece for this area already, but I am going to. The Corda Fontaine is really nice. Dang, they have like, it's interesting that the early creative drafts for the Court of Fontaine are 3D rendered, at least these ones, because I think the Court of Fontaine is quite similar to stuff we've seen in Honkai Impact. So that would have been 3D modeled. So I feel like, I think that's really interesting. And there's some of the designs for the shops, which are really nice. I really like the shops, I do. Even like top down, which is fun, which I guess you would need top down because people People being me like to break things and stand on top of things they're not supposed to stand on top of. Me, I do that with Kazaha all the time. It's really nice. Also, if there's any like screen tearing or screen glitching, I had to turn on hardware acceleration for Chrome, which I usually try not to do because it breaks. Chrome breaks my computer. It's literally just Chrome. Chrome and Steam sometimes, but I digress. I guess next we'll do the Opera Epic Place, which is like the court, which God, that's pretty. You can tell, I bet they 3D rendered that too really pretty so this is the out outdoors really nice there's only the two concept arts which i guess makes sense because it's like one specific building i would have loved to see the early shots in the early concept work what is it called early creative drafts i would have loved to see it for the opera that would be really nice then there is elena's which i haven't even seen all this i can't say what specific it's what specific part of honkai impact third it's giving but it's giving which it was something I entirely expected out of Fontaine because Fontaine is one of the places like Honkai Impact 3rd has St. Fontaine. So like I expected it out of Fontaine and Genshin. I really did. This is really cool though. It looks kind of, I think it's supposed to be a dragon, which I think is something we get to later on for the creative drafts here. Oh yeah, definitely it's supposed to be. It's giving something. There's a full skull. So this would be the head because it even says so in the notes. That's really cool though. So then there's, I want to say poison, but I think it's, I, I, I don't. It looks like it's like the underground area, which is, this is really cool, this concept art. I love concept art. I am a sucker for this sort of thing. And you can even see like the outline of where the traveler is supposed to go. And they used Lumine quite a bit in this, the planning for this, which is really cool. This is, I think, where we're getting a lot more of the steampunky elements, which I, I love this light, he, these two lights. Well, this one's a jellyfish. And then this one's like, what is it? An angler fish with a light that like, on top of the head that's really cool it definitely kind of ropes in the fontaine like fishy elements with more like industrial stuff which is really cool i really like that that's fun that's really fun so that was the early creative drafts then we kind of go over the concept art and it looks like some of those lights might not have made it which is upsetting but i love i wish that they would have made that because you can kind of see like there's a jellyfish hanging off the stall here but i wish they would have kept that little anglerfish light specifically and i don't know if it's an anglerfish but i'm gonna keep calling it that i wish they would have kept that i kind of hope that maybe we'll get in game i'll get in game and see it obviously i could go in game right now and look for it but i haven't done fontaine so i just i love concept my screen is glitching already great so then we only have one place left which looks like it's multi-level because it has the little icon for that mercy village oh that's so pretty that's like more of the underwater i was saying it's giving watatsumi island a little bit so that there's concept art there's just the two shots for concept art interesting we don't get the early concept design okay we can go to the next area which is going to be i think boss designs if i'm not mistaken monster concept all right oh yes there's designs for the clockwork mecha yes Tailder, I've mentioned this a bunch of times and I haven't fought this boss yet because I know I want to do a, a video for it. Um, the Icewind Suite, is that what it's called? The boss is based on figure skating and I used to be a competitive figure skater. So that's, it gets me, it gets me. I'm going to do the Ruin Monsters and then we'll do the Crab and then we'll do the Ice Dancers. Okay, so Ruin Monsters, I got my piece. Hello, Linny. Oh, interesting because a lot of these are sumeru bosses actually or like bosses that were introduced in sumeru possibly inazuma but i really don't remember that far back so we have the ruin drake so this must be some of the stuff they showed at the exhibit that wasn't related to fontaine because it wasn't just it was they did the art exhibit because of fontaine and like oh art 
ah, like that sort of thing for the gimmick, I bet. At least I'm assuming it was for the gimmick of Fontaine being artsy, but I mean, obviously there's so many things we haven't seen. So then this is going to be the Ruin Drake. Are they both Ruin Drakes? Yeah, there's the Earth Guard and the Skywatch. So the Skywatch is the one that flies that I hate because one time my, I got DC'd while I was fighting this thing and it just haunts me in my nightmares now. I, I, I still remember that, I do. So that's the flying one. And there's the Aeon Blight Drake, which is also a pain in the butt, but it's, it's an easy fight. Then we have the algorithm of semi intransient matrix of overseer network, which always gets me a little bit because of that word overseer in there. If you know, you know, that's how I knew. That's how I was like, oh, this isn't just Fontaine stuff. I saw this guy. And then there's the ruined serpent. Oh, that's really cool. They have it broken down into like color coded parts. That's really cool. So that was one part. Oh, and then, oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay, so it's working down into the parts. So this is the next one. It has, what was this called? Fontamer Aberrant. So this is going to be some of the stuff we have specifically in Fontaine because we have the fire and iron crab. I wish we could see early. <gasps> I want to see early creative drafts. Thank God. <laughs> I was like, I wish we could see early drafts. Like, I wish I want even more of this or I want so I want to see like the whole if I could see the whole process of them designing the ice dancer boss, I totally would. That is a, like I want to see that. It's just I love it. So this is the concept art for the crab. And then we have the creative drafts, which it's just very crabby. It's very crabby. Interesting. And then we have some of the cute little ones. So we have the Blubber Beasts, which is adorable. Oh my God, the creative drafts are so cute. I'm this one, tag yourself. I'm the green one, the confused. I'm just, I'm literally the confused one. That's so cute though. I don't think we have a green one. I think it's just the blue and purple, but I wish we had this doofy looking green guy. It's so cute. That's adorable. I love early concept art. It's one of my favorite things. Like, cause you get like just weird stuff like the green guy or like what was it chibi from an a or was it from that had the chibi i don't remember then we have the hunter rays which are these three this one's so pretty i haven't really seen these too much at all it's interesting how the early creative drafts are like very similar to some of the ones that they ended up using like this pink is like a combination of like these two but then it has like a different i keep clicking out has like a different design it looks like or it looks like this purple one that they ended up being the final one it's like a combination of these two but with more purple weirdly enough this one's really cool this one with like the x on it that's really sick i kind of wish they went with one like that because it is a very specific color scheme but i almost like because there is two draft ones with darker color schemes i wish like i hope one day we just get like the bottom of the ocean and there's like these like ultra horrors down there and we have everything's like you would think you would you're seeing a normal what is it hunter's ray from far away no it's an ultra horror it literally is like seeing things then there's the angelic sea hair i haven't seen these at all but oh my god they're cute they're so cute what is the drafts for this like oh my god these uh these drafts in the box this is gonna be very niche but i don't know how many people watching this how many people here today play neopets <laughs> But it doesn't remind me of the Neopets. It reminds me specifically of the Pet Pets, which were like pets for your Neopet. I don't remember what any of them are called because I named all of mine anyway. So I don't remember what any of them were like actually called. But this, like if you told me that's a Pet Pet from Neopets, I believe you. I believe you. I'd be like, oh yeah, I play. I remember that from the game. Yeah, it just, I don't know. Like this one's a fairy one. I don't know what color this would be. This one's plushy. And this one is like, it's so cute, by the way. It looks like an R and R, which I think is really interesting. But this one, the green one, A specifically, is like some grass type. I don't know. And then this is one D. looks like a, looks like a slug. I love that. This one has horns. That's really cool. Cool. So it's really also interesting how E looks kind of like a sealy, but also like that bird pet that we have in game. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> then we have the bubbler seahorse, which I don't. I haven't come across this yet. Obviously. The creative drafts are really similar, but you can tell they definitely like picked a color scheme and ran with it. That's really cool. So then we have the clockwork mecha section and there is this. Why is my hard drive disconnect? What hard drive just now? That is concerning. Um, should I be concerned? No, we're going to continue the video. My my microphone is still recording, so we're going to continue the video. There's a dog. Oh, my God. I didn't know there was a dog. It has a camera eye. Why does it remind me? What is it like the Boston something dog? OK, so we have this one. Which I have not fought any of these mechs yet. I think I got jumped by like these two guys over here, but I haven't fought them, which that this is interesting. These two look like Fatui. Anyways, we have the Annihilation Specialist mech. Oh, my God. Like the little they modeled like all the little parts. So obviously they had to, but that's really cool. And we can see early creative drafts. This 
these creative drafts definitely are giving more of like something out of Honkai Impact Third, which I really like. Again, because I you can you can see those like little things like carry over in the design, which same company, different games. But I love when little things like that you can see like carry over because it is the same. I would assume very similar teams making this stuff. That's really cool though. I, that's why I love seeing the early creative drafts, especially because I have played like, enough of Honkai Impact to like see the carryover. Then we have the underwater patrol mech. I feel like I might've seen these. It's also really cool to see the different art styles with all the early creative drafts because you can tell like different teams worked on different things. It's really cool. There's the area alert mech. Interesting. This one doesn't even have outlines. Look at that. Then we have the dog. It literally is a dog. I love it. Literally, it's like, I don't remember know what it's called, but you can, it literally is that Boston whatever robot dog. That literally is what this is, which I think is so fun. They made like fantasy Boston robot dog. I love that. Do it for the meme. That's so cool. Then we have these two, which I'm pretty sure I got jumped by in Fontaine. I was just trying to fight stuff. They're, they are the Assault Specialist Mech and Suppression Specialist Mech, which they look really similar to like the big Fatui guys that we do fight, which I think is, I think that's done purposely. I think that is a purposeful thing. Um, I think the Fatui have some sort of hold in Fontaine because that's usually what we end up getting. Uh, I could be eating my words. Who knows? This We're not spoiling here today because um, I haven't done it. And then there's also animation design work, which is really cool. The animation design work goes over my head because it's like, that's a lot of lines, but that's really cool. All right, it's time. The, what we've been waiting for. Let's look at the art for Icewind Suite. Oh, wow, it's pretty. I love this art specifically, like with the filter on it is really cool. Like they made it all old timey. So that's the concept art. And then I, I want to like get in on the early creative drafts. There's animation. Oh my God, wait, I love this. Okay, we're gonna talk about the, the animation design for that really specifically, cause that is like, so that's too real. That's too real. I do really enjoy the look they went with. Cause like even looking at the early creative drafts, I really like what they picked. Like, I don't think there's any one specific design here that I like over what the actual design they picked. Cause I feel like the actual design they ended up going with and picked does actually remind me of something it reminds me enough of like actual costumes you would see in figure skating. And some of these just don't do that. Cause like with the, with the feminine of the two, it, the, the skirt, like it, you need a, a big skirt, right? But it can't be too big. And a lot of the skirt designs are like really big and it just doesn't work. Cause you can tell they were kind of going with a specific design that a lot is a, seen a lot with a lot of the NPCs in Fontaine, like that more ballroom, princess dress type of thing, but it, that would, it just wouldn't work for this boss. So I do like what they ended up going with. The same thing with the masculine dancer, like some of these like big coats, like you can tell the style they were going for to match more of the Fontaine stuff. You can see that, but I feel like, again, you can't really move in a big coat like that. So I do again, like what they went with, with like they had, he has a little like cape more so than a big coat. And also I think it really helps so you can see like the movement because that's why a lot of the like big costume type stuff isn't really recommended and kind of frowned upon in like competitive figure skating spheres because you can't see like the movement of the skater. So like that's why that's there. And I like how they definitely kind of carry that over to the design of this boss because you wouldn't be able to see it. You would not be able to see it. And that's all the whole point is it's like they're dancing, they're skating, whatever. So I do like that a lot. I do would like to point out now that I'm looking really closely, I love this design just for the like absurdity of it. So in this design here, the feminine dancer is a candelabra. <laughs> There's candles and I can't really tell what's going on with the masculine one, but he just has like a bunch of weapons, like this an assortment of knives, swords. This looks like it could be a gun in the middle. <laughs> and I think that's also kind of funny. I, I, I like that one. You know what? I do like that one. I will say that. That one's funny. That one is funny, but I don't think it would hit the same. I think it would be more of like a gag. The boss would definitely be more of a gag, but I, I do like it. I think it's fun. And then the animation design is something I love because you can definitely see certain things that are definitely like carried over because they said they looked at figure skating specifically, specifically this. Um, I would like you all to know. <laughs> that this is something that is very commonly done actually in training for figure skating. I had notebooks and papers and what have you, pictures in my phone of like footwork patterns and things. There's actually official footwork patterns you can look up because something that ha you have to do in figure skating, at least in US figure skating, which I think is really stupid, is take these tests. 
And in order to compete at higher levels, you need to take the, the specific tests that correspond with those levels. And how it works is that there is the free skate test, which is like the programs and routines you see at the, like the Olympics on TV. Ah. And then there's also the, what is it? The, it's like footwork, but I can't remember the actual name of it. Oh my God, I'm fake. I'm fake. How many years did I do this? I forget, but there's like, you have to specifically, they test you on footwork. And in order to take the corresponding level test for your program, the free skate, you need to take the footwork test that coincides with it. And it's so annoying, <laughs> but it's something you have to do. And if you look up the specific like guides in for which have like the lists of the specific footwork routines you have to do for these footwork tests, there's actually going to be pictures in the book, I believe. It's either in the book or my coach just had them on standby of these footwork patterns for the test. So I grew up on these which is kind of insane to see now. And also see like the, where they have like little notes for like an attack, like that's gonna attack here, where like that would be like where you turn. It's so wild for me to see, cause it's like, oh, those are real things that figure skaters actively use. And like the judges, cause you're, the thing is you have like a committee of judges watching you do these tests and they all have to pass you. Like at the, I think at the lower levels, it's like half of them pass you, you're fine. But the higher ones, if they don't all give you a pass, you're done for, you're done. You gotta do it again. And they cost money. So that's that's fun. But like, I think when I tapped out, I was it was like, I I think it was like five, a panel of like five judges and they all had to give you a hundred. Basically, that's was the, the gist of it. I might be making that up. I might, it might be not be that deep, but I, I'm pretty sure it was that deep. <laughs> and like, I love how it says like loop here, which is like, cause that's actually like a thing. I love that. Like, that's so cool. That's so cool for me. And then even like these, I love how they specifically have noted here the hands for the feminine model, because that is actually like ballet placement for like where you're, what you're supposed to do in ballet for hands. And the same thing is recommended in figure skating to have the like the ballet hands. So like I was forced to take an exercise class for school. I think it was last semester. This is so niche, but you'll, it'll, you'll get the point. You'll get the point. And it was, I think I, t I ended up taking yoga, right? And you would do like the hands like that sometimes. And I would do it subconsciously. It was so embarrassing because no one else was doing that. I would just do it subconsciously, like the ballet hands. And I'm like, stop, you must stop. But I would literally do it subconsciously. And so I love that that's like specifically noted the hand placement that that's how you know they looked. I just, I love it. I love it. It's really cool. I, I really want to fight the boss now. Dang. I fought the crab, um, but I haven't fought this boss yet. Oh, I love that. I love that. <laughs> I like I was just talking about how I animation design goes over my head, but this, this I can get, this I can understand heavily. I heavily understand this one. I feel like this boss might actually end up being quite easy for me then, especially with learning their patterns. I don't know though, cause these are, these might not be the final animations, you know? I love it though. I love it so much. Oh my God. I love that. Love, I love that boss. I really do. So what do we have next? We have the, what is it? Co-creative space. What is that? Oh, these are the more like, scales things they had oh we can zoom in thank god okay so this looks like it is for lua and it does i believe have the artist's name so is it is it co-creative space actually just art oh my god actually it might just be art oh that's really pretty i don't i can't tell if that's the name or not you just oh i don't know if that's their actual name but i'm i think this is this supposed to be Azaha, and this is a building that's really cool that's really cool oh yeah no it definitely is art of some sort Oh, this is like, this is really cool because it looks like an actual like fancy painting, but it's like Fontaine. That's really cool. Okay, it is, it is like art. I can't specifically read all the characters in this one, so I'm not, I'm not going to try to butcher it. But then this is one of the umbrellas from Inazuma, which is really nice. Wow, that's wild. That one's wild. Oh, I got a piece. Thank God. Oh my God, it's one of the wolves. That's really, what is this made with? Oh, that's insane. That is actually insane. So I'm assuming this was featured at one of the exhibits in Japan, maybe? Because this is, I think, Japanese on there. That's really cool. Oh my God. It's like woodwork or something. That's insane. That's insane. Oh, by Dante Gu. This is really, really. Oh my God. I can't particularly tell what this is. I think it's Fontaine. I would assume it's Fontaine based, but that's real. That's art. That is like art right there. And then we're back. Okay, so it looks like there is uh, more on Hoyo Lab, but we I did get the piece, so we will keep going, especially because I spent so much time on the monsters. And there's audio visual. We might skip that because I don't want to get copyrighted, to be completely honest. Actually, I do have it muted. I think this is just a preview from YouTube. But then there's a couple of showcase videos, it looks like. Okay, so I think these might actually be of stuff at the exhibit. So we think we can watch them. Oh, I got a piece. 
I guess I do have to watch them. So this is the armored crab. Okay, so the crab, I think it's like an actual physical thing they were, had on display. But you could tell me this is something out of Blender and I would believe you. The only problem is these videos are so short. Wow. So that's the underwater patrol mech. That's really cool. I do think I got my piece though. So then these are vertical, which is kind of annoying. I think this is the Beaumont workshop. It's just like little scale models. It's really cute. I, I guess they are physical because it looks like a physical video. And I guess it's probably they would have made them. And these must be some of the weapons. Song of Stillness is our bow. Yeah, I think this is one of the new four star weapons for Fontaine. It's really pretty. That This actually looks like it could be from Blender. Maybe not the book because this is flowing purity. It like looks real, but it also could be in Blender. I can't tell. They have them for all the weapons. I'm not going to go through all of them, but it is like, really, that's really cool work. And then we have prize draw. I think I can just draw now. Remaining draws is five. Can I, I just want Primo gems, man. <laughs> I'm not going to get like a big prize. Honestly, Primo gems are like kind of big. Primo gems are like one of the biggest things on here. <laughs> all right, draw now. Stop on Primo gem. Stop on the Primo gem. Primo gem, Primo gem, please. <laughs> Stop on the Primo. Stop. No, no, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Stop. No, keep. Mora. 10,000 Mora actually isn't that bad. Coping. All right, I'm gonna go again. Look at what we got in this video. If it stops in like one of the big, big things, I'm gonna be like, what? I just literally want the Primo. Hero's wit times one. <laughs> Hero's wit times one. Oh, I literally just want the Primos. That's it. I don't want the physical stuff. I literally just want Primo gems. Stop. Nope, it's gonna keep going. Okay, okay, stop. No, I didn't even get a prize. <laughs> oh, that's rough. I didn't even know there was prizes. I just wanted to do this to look at art. You know, I'm coping. Maybe if I don't look, we'll like land on the iPhone. I don't need a new phone. I don't want a new phone. Stop. No. Keep going. Keep going. Dang it. All right. Go again. I mean, I got two prizes. Isn't that like, what? to be fair, one of the prizes was a singular hero's wit. I wasn't even in this for the prizes. I just want some primo gems. Stop. Oh, it's going to stop. Yep. There we go. <laughs> that's how they get you. That's how they get you. So that's the image. An event exclusive wallpaper. I'm not going to save it, but it's cute. <laughs> It's really cute. It's literally just the art from the the top page of the thing. I think we can go back to the beginning, but I don't know how to do that. So we'll just end on the wallpaper image. So that was the online art exhibit. Obviously, there wasn't as much in the selection, probably wasn't as extensive as if I were to like, as if you were to go physically go to the exhibits, because I know they had certain like scale models and things on display in different locations, but it was still fun. I really liked looking at the art for the Icewind Sweet boss because I actually wanted to see that. I wanted to like kind of pick apart certain elements of it. And I thought that the only way I'd be able to do that is to like fight it and like watch back my own footage. Um, but no, I was able to actually like look at some of the art, which was really nice, especially because I was like things I specifically recognized. <laughs> Animation design specifically. Animation design specifically, which was really cool. I thought I would never see those footwork pattern drawings ever again in my life, but here we are. They haunt me for years and years past. <laughs> They're going to continue to haunt me. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. I will link the art exhibit event thing down below. Hopefully you guys will be luckier in your prize draws than I. Get some primos, please get primos for me. Do it for me. <laughs> I got no primos, get your primos. If you like this video, make sure to give me a like down below as well as subscribe for more and click the little notification bell to be notified when I upload new ones. As always, I hope everyone had or is having a super lovely day wherever you are in the world, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys!